हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ दिस सेशन इज फास्ट लॉ अप्लाइड टू फ्लो प्रोसेस इन द प्रीवियस क्लासेस आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट द फास्ट लॉ रिलेटेड टू क्लोज सिस्टम टुडे आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट द फास्ट लॉ व्हिच इज अप्लाइड टू फ्लो प्रोसेस और कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम और ओपन सिस्टम बेसिकली एज यू नो दैट द फास्ट लॉ इज द कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी which remains same for the open system or closed system or control volume but the expression of the fast law changes a little bit which we will learn today and we will see how the expression changes for the flow process that flow may be steady or may be unsteady so let's start the class so at first we consider a control volume which has a input and output there may be various inputs and outputs but for the ease of calculation we, we are taking a single input and a single output let the input section is 1 1 i have shown in this figure and the output section is 2 2 so from the input section a mass of fluid or a fluid stream is coming into the control volume and from the output section a mass of fluid or a fluid stream is going out of the control flow so there is a continuous flow of some fluid or a stream into the control flow and let dm1 dt is the mass flow rate of the fluid at the inlet of the control flow and dm2 dt is the mass flow rate at the outlet of the control volume and also let dq dt is the rate of heat transfer to the control volume and dw dt is the rate of work transfer by the control volume so now if this is the datum line and we consider that this height which is z1 is the height of the inlet pipe from the datum line and this height the, the, which is z2 is the height of the outlet pipe from the datum line so now let there is the ecv that is the internal energy of the control volume at any instant and mcv is the mass of the control volume at any instant and i i have al already told that dm1 dt is the mass flow rate at the inlet and dm2 dt is the mass flow rate at the outlet so with the flow of stream there will be some energy associated with the stream which is coming into the control volume and with the uh, outflow of the stream there will be some energy associated with that stream that will going out with the control volume so let e which is the stored energy in a stream of fluid per unit mass that is u plus pv plus v square by 2 plus gz that means this u is the specific internal energy of the fluid this pv is the flow work this v square by 2 is the kinetic energy per unit mass of the fluid and this gz is the potential energy per unit mass of the fluid so this all total is the energy associated with the stream per unit mass basis which is coming into the control volume with the inflow of the fluid and this is the energy equation which is associated with the stream that is going out of the control volume with the outflow of the fluid so we can say that from the conservation of mass you can say that dm1 dt minus dm2 dt equals to dmcv dt that means the mass flow rate that is coming into the control volume minus dm2 dt that is the mass outflow rate that is going out from the control volume is equals to the rate of change of mass of control volume and from the law of conservation of energy we can say that the total energy that is coming into the control volume with the stream of fluid also the heat input 
minus the total energy that is going out of the control volume equals to the rate of change of energy of the control volume. So we can write this that as we know that dm1 dt is the mass flow rate at the inlet and e1 that is the energy associated with the fluid at the inlet this multiplies the total energy that is coming into the control volume with the stream of the fluid and dm2 dt into e2 it, it is the total energy associated with the stream of fluid that is going out from the control volume equals to the rate of energy change of the control volume which is DECV by DT and as in the previous picture I, I have shown you that DQ DT is the heat rate of heat transfer that is coming into the control volume and DW DT is the rate of work transfer that is going out from the control volume so if we include that that two in the equation we'll get that the equation will look like this which is equals to the rate of change of energy of control volume so here you can see that the e1 which i have shown you in the previous slide that this e is the energy stored in the uh, fluid that is associated with the stream of flow which is our u plus pv plus v square by 2 plus gz1 so for the inlet we have written the subscript as 1 and for the outlet we, we have written the subscript as 2 so as we know that the enthalpy expression is u plus pv so u1 plus p1 v1 can be written as h1 and u2 plus p2 v2 can be written as h2 so let this e e equation number is 1 so now at steady state so what is steady state basically steady flow means that the rate of flow of mass and energy across the control surface are constant in most engineering devices there is a constant rate of flow of mass and energy through the control surface and the control volume in course of time attains a steady state at the steady state of a system any thermodynamic property will have a fixed value at a particular location and will not alter with time thermodynamic properties may vary along space coordinates but do not vary with time steady state means that the state is steady or invariant with time so from the definition of steady state we can say that at steady state condition the dmcv ddt value will be zero that is the mass rate of change of mass trans mass of control volume will be zero and if we consider that equals to zero we will get an equation like this on the uh, mass conservation law that dm1 equals to dm2 and let this is equals to dm dt and also at steady state condition the rate of energy of control volume will also be zero so now from equation one we will get that at decv dt equals to zero at steady state so the value of decv dt equals to zero here and at and as dmcv dt equals to zero so from the conservation of mass uh, equation we can write that dm1 dt equals to dm2 dt and we have considered that as dm dt so we have replaced the dm1 dt and dm2 dt with dm dt here in the equation so now the equation becomes like this and this is as the total e e equation is with respect to time so this equation can be called as the time rate basis equation and from there we can derive the equation which is per unit mass basis so after uh, solving we will get that dq by dm minus dw dm equals to h2 plus v2 square by 2 plus gz2 minus h1 plus v1 square plus gz1 
this equation we get at the steady state condition that's why this equation is termed as steady flow energy equation so there are also some example or application of steady flow equation or the steady flow process that is in the turbine or compressor turbine and engines give positive power output but the compressor and pumps re it requires power input so as we know if this is a turbine and if we uh, assume that the process is adiabatic and the power output from the turbine is dwdm that means there is no heat transfer uh, to the uh, turbine or from the surroundings as it is insulated so the dqdm term will be zero and if we consider that the inlet the height of inlet pipe and the height of outlet pipe from the datum line is equal then we, we can write that the z1 equals to z2 if this z1 equals to z2 then the steady flow energy equation which looks like this will become TW by DM equals to H1 minus H2. So this is the equation for the turbine if this condition satisfied. And for similarly for adiabatic pump and compressor the equation be be becomes like this that is DW DM equals to H2 minus H1 that is the final enthalpy minus initial enthalpy. then we look to the equation of steady flow energy equation in case of boiler so in case of boiler we know that boiler is a heat interacting device in this case we assume that no external work is done also the kinetic energy difference can be considered as negligibly small as compared to the change of enthalpy so the v1 square by 2 equals to v1 v2 square by 2 terms he comes here that the kinetic energy for both the inlet and the outlet is same and if we consider that the height of inlet pipe and outlet pipe is same that is z1 equals to z2 the steady flow equation for boiler becomes dqdm equals to h2 minus h1 where h2 is the uh, uh, specific enthalpy at the final point and H1 is the specific enthalpy at the initial point. Then come to the th throttling process. So basically when a fluid flows through a constricted passage like a partially opened valve and orifice or a porous plug there is an appreciable drop in pressure and the flow is said to be throttled so let's in the figure we can see the process of throttling where we, we can see the one one section is the inlet and the two two section is the outlet and the throttle valve is insulated and this is the control surface In the steady flow energy equation for throttling, the dqdm term is zero and also the dwdm term is zero. That means the rate of heat transfer and the rate of work transfer is zero. The rate of heat tra transfer is zero here as the throttle valve is insulated and dwdm is zero here as we are not getting any work transfer from the throttle valve. So, if also we consider that the changes of potential in energy are very small and it can be ignored, thus the steady flow energy equation reduces to h1 plus v1 square by 2 equals to h2 plus v2 square by 2. And often it has been observed that the pipe velocities are so low that the kinetic energy terms are also negligible. So, here the equation becomes h1 equals to h2 that means the 
the specific enthalpy at e inlet equals to the specific enthalpy at the outlet point and that why the throttling process is termed as the isenthalpic process that means the enthalpy remains constant in the throttling process next comes to the nozzle and diffusers a nozzle is a device which increases the velocity or kinetic energy of a fluid at the expense of its pressure drop and diffuser increases the pressure of fluid at the expense of its kinetic energy so this is the figure uh, of a nozzle and this nozzle is insulated and this one one section is the inlet section of the nozzle and this two two section is the outlet section of the nozzle so as we know the steady flow energy equation looks like this and if and as the nozzle is insulated so the dq dm term here is zero and as the nozzle performs no work transfer to the surroundings so we can write that the dw dm term is also zero so the equation becomes like this that is the h1 plus v1 square by 2 equals to h2 plus v2 square by 2 so when the inlet velocity or the velocity of approach which is v1 is small compared to the exit velocity v2 the equation becomes h1 equals to h2 plus v2 square by 2 and from this equation we can get the exit velocity which is root over 2 into h1 minus h2 